Hi everyone. What does it mean to invoke the name of Jesus? In Acts 16 we read, Once, when we were going to the place of prayer, we were met by a female slave who had a spirit by which she predicted the future. She earned a great deal of money for her owners by fortune-telling. She followed Paul and the rest of us shouting, These men are servant of the Most High God who are telling you the way to be saved. She kept this up for many days. Finally, Paul became so annoyed that he turned around and said to the spirit, in the name of Jesus Christ, I command you to come out of her. At that moment, the spirit left her. During an unbound session, we invoke the name of Jesus during the second, the third, and the fourth key. In forgiveness, it's in the name of Jesus, I forgive. In the third key, it's in the name of Jesus, I renounce. And in the fourth key, the leader says, in the name of Jesus Christ, I command every spirit that the person is named to leave right now. In the book of Acts, St. Peter encouraged the people of Jerusalem to repent and be baptized in the name of Jesus. Peter and John healed the lame beggar who asked them for money by commanding him to walk in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. What's happening here? I often think of old movies when police officers would chase a bank robber around and they would shout, stop in the name of the law. The police officer wasn't saying, stop because I'm telling you to. He wasn't saying, stop because I'm shouting at you. He was saying, stop because the government is speaking to you through me right now. Stop because the government has both the right and the power to stop you. It also reminds me of those judges in courts who will finalize a marriage in court by saying, by the power vested in me by the state of Florida, I now pronounce you husband and wife. The judge is saying, that the state of Florida, Florida is legally speaking and acting through him. As he speaks the words, a legal act is taking place. Why do we invoke the name of Jesus? I wanna give you three reasons why we speak in the name of Jesus. First, it is an expression of his lordship. He is the king and we are his ambassadors. In Colossians 3, verse 17, it says, Whatever you do, whether in word or deed, do it all in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God the Father through him. Everything that we say and everything that we do is to be an expression of his lordship in our lives. We're called to live our lives as representatives of the kingdom of Jesus and that we are under his authority. And the authority that we carry is the result of our being in Christ. So whatever we do and whatever we say is that an expression of being in his kingdom. Second, it's also an expression of our belonging. In 2 Chronicles 7 verse 14, God says, If my people who are called by my name shall humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then I shall hear from heaven, forgive their sin, and heal their land. To be called by his name, to invoke his name, means we belong to him. John chapter 1, verse 12 says, Yet to all who did receive him, to those who believed in his name, he gave the right to become children of God. In John 17, Jesus prays that the Father would protect his disciples by his name. And in verse 20 through 21, he says, Father, I'm not asking on behalf of them alone, but also on behalf of all those who will believe in me through their message, that all of them may be one. As you, Father, are in me, and I am in, in you, may they also be in us, so that the world may believe that you sent me. So the name of Jesus is an expression that we belong to the family of God. 
Third, it's a response that declares the victory of Jesus over the power of sin and darkness. The disciples don't invoke Jesus' name flippantly. They don't use his name to order pancakes. They don't use the name of Jesus to tell Roman soldiers around you know, what to do. In both these cases in, in the book of Acts, both Peter and Paul were on their way to the place of prayer. They were doing exactly what God called them to do. For Peter, it was to meet daily for prayer, and for Paul, it was to preach the good news in the synagogue. In both of these stories, someone stepped into their path. They entered their sphere of influence. A lame beggar asking for money. A demonized girl shouting after them. It was a person in need asking for help, and a person in bondage who was encountering the kingdom of God. In Unbound Ministry, we invoke the name of Jesus because someone is asking for help and wants to submit their lives to the King. And so we invite them to invoke His name as an expression that as they forgive and as they renounce, they're doing it in union with the will of the Holy Spirit. And they take their stand against the devil's schemes, not alone, but as a child of God with authority. When you encounter darkness or evil or a person's need, a deprivation of justice, a wound, you need to remember the good news. The gospel says that Jesus has broken the power of sin and he's established his reign on the earth. And we are his ambassadors bringing his power and his love with us wherever we go. The power of the love of God can be expressed through you as you speak and act in his name. The answer is not in what we can do, but who is in us. Peter and John say, silver or gold I do not have, but what I have I give you. In the name of Jesus, walk. I want to encourage you to think about what you have because you are called by his name. What do you have access to? to because you are in God's family and under his authority. What is yours to give in that moment when someone asks you for help? When you pray or you speak or you act, whether you give a hug, whether you pray for healing, you are called to declare what you have in Jesus' name. Thank you and God bless.